What can we do, we ask, when the richest 2% of the world's population owns more than 50% of global household wealth? Nearly half have no electricity and live for less than $2 a day. One quarter are illiterate and one fifth have no access to health care. The reality was, and still is, a broken system which we each have to try to fix in whatever little ways we can. little to improve another person's life. I asked, as a typical sociologist would, how do we align doing business and doing good for the community? I'm sure this question is top of mind for many young women here today who are considering setting up social enterprises to address the poverty they see around them. Best dress and I, I was Among many insights which shaped my views about business was the notion of doing good which repeatedly surfaced in the transcripts. The phrase often used in the Chinese business community is qi shi hui, yong zhi shi hui, meaning contribute to society in return for what you have benefited from society. I believe in heritage and roots. In us working harder at discovering our own history and culture for inspiration in creating an Asian variant of capitalism. One such source can be the webs of mutual obligations which serve as a common recurring social ethical tradition in Asia. I no longer feel the need to present the business case to argue why businesses must perform beyond economics. It is in the end a leadership call for me to set a priori first principles in doing business the way I believe is right. Feminine principle. This may be an a priori definition which you can challenge. I define it to include reciprocal relationship, pluralism, integration, inclusiveness, balance, and teamwork, which to me are important qualities in shaping a better world order. Cheryl Sandberg's idea that women should visualize their careers as a jungle gym, not a ladder, is an insightful imagery. Ladders are limiting, with only one way up, whereas jungle gyms offer more a creative exploration with many ways to get to the top. Women can dream big and lean in, be more open to take career risks, sit at the table where corporate decisions are made, negotiate for work flexibility, and allow men to be more empowered at home. Zigzagging and coming in and out of the labor market, always leaning in to new opportunities and finding solutions to challenges are what empowering women need to do. Do not sit back. As long as we persist in trying and doing, recognizing and accepting trade-offs in the choices we made, we will find our rainbow. This is a clarion call. We need an innovative mind map, an enhanced roadmap 
to chase the rainbow in this century. Hopefully, conferences like today's is part of that harmonization process to forge our collective goals. We shall rise to this vision, what if women ruled the world, and learn to apply various repertoires of leadership skill sets to shape new ways of ordering our reality. We will scale down the command and control male leadership style to adopt, when necessary, a contractual and negotiator style that is efficient and professional, while strengthening a more feminine, integrative, and harmonizing touch. Such inclusive and flexible leadership style, if I may call it the innovative feminine principle, which both men and women can embrace, will become, I believe, a necessary rainbow ethos to foster a sense of community. We celebrate the women in the community. We do not wish to argue that we can do anything better than men, because that's not true. We can definitely believe, however, we cannot do worse, and that is courage. When men and women put their minds together and act for community, that is wisdom. <laughs>